The mantra is don't repeat yourself. We'd like to normalize our work so that there's one and only one version of any particular behavior in our code. Then, if we need to change anything, there's only one place to change it. This is nearly always good advice, but not always. For bigger or more complex systems, coupling is an equally implacable enemy, at least as important as duplication. And to make things worse, the trade-off for don't repeat yourself is increased coupling. This is commonly one of the biggest stumbling blocks for teams trying to adopt microservices. So what about those times when dry is the wrong answer? When is dry a problem rather than a solution? Hi, I'm Dave Farley of Continuous Delivery. Welcome to my channel. If you haven't been here before, please do hit subscribe. And if you enjoy the content here today, hit like too. If you'd like to learn more about what it takes to create great software, check out my training courses at courses.cd.training. We have a variety of courses, free and paid for, that you may find interesting. In this episode, I'd like to explore the costs and benefits of removing duplication in our code. Don't repeat yourself, or dry as it's more popularly known, is probably one of the best known design heuristics. If you ask people about the guidelines that they use to improve the quality of their designs, dry is usually high up on their list. This is for a good reason. It makes a lot of sense. Certainly in big code bases, one of the commonest anti-patterns, a form of waste in the design, is that behavior is duplicated in multiple parts of the code. This is bad because it means that when we need to change that behavior, we will need to identify all of the places in the code where it exists, which may or may not be easy. It also means that as a result of this first problem, over time it's very likely that the different copies of this behaviour will start to drift apart. We will end up with several different, slightly different versions of the same behaviour in different parts of the code, each a little different from the others, and this makes for systems that are unpleasant to use, and if not just out and out wrong, as well as systems that are a pain to maintain. This is because we have to hunt down all of those different places where we do something if we need to fix a bug or add the behavior. Over time, this just gets worse and worse. That's why people started to recommend dry as an approach. Wikipedia describes dry like this. Every piece of knowledge must have a single, unambiguous, authoritative representation within a system. This is good advice. If we organize our code like this, it's much easier to work on. Here is some unpleasant code. Okay, it's written in C, but just because you're writing in C doesn't mean that you have to write crap code. This little block of code here is repeated 13 times inside this single function. This is horrible code. Clearly, the developer either had never heard of dry or didn't care enough about it to to, to, to try and apply it to this piece of code. At this level, dry is not just a good idea, it's pretty much essential to doing a decent job. We can improve this code trivially by creating a small function that we can call to do whatever it is that this block of code is doing, with the added benefit that we could name that block of code and so we, the readers, would have a better idea of what it was that the code was supposed to be doing. If we were refactoring, I'd probably start by extracting a method, maybe called something like debug warning. This would make the code considerably better in a single simple step. So the dry guideline has worked and helped us to write better code. But there's a problem, one that doesn't matter and doesn't crop up at this scale, but what if the code base is bigger? Let's say, for example, that we have two services, A and B. They both need debug warning. If we follow dry, then there should only be one copy. Now our services are coupled via debug warning. If service A wants to add something to debug warning, it forces service B to change in step. 
We can reduce the cost of this by operating a shared code ownership kind of approach, keeping service A and service B in the same repo along with our single implementation of debug warning and maybe using continuous integration to evaluate any changes and so help us to spot if our changes break anything. This works and is pretty good advice on the whole. What if service A and service B were microservices though? I talked about microservices in an earlier episode. A microservice is by definition independently deployable. The whole point of a microservices is, is to allow for organizational scaling through decoupling. We want teams to be able to work independently of one another. We don't get to test our microservices together before release or they wouldn't be independently deployable. So what does that mean for our services and their shared function? If there's only one copy of it, where do we keep debug warning? Is it in the repo for one of the services? If so, then the other service is not independent because it now depends on the code in the repo for the first service. Our services are developmentally coupled. Maybe we should move debug warning into its own repository. Okay, but our services may still be developmentally coupled at this point. It really depends on how we manage this. There are several different options. The easiest one to think about is if the function is just a function. We can treat it as some kind of library function that we can link with and then call. So we could add something into the build of our services to establish a dependency on our debug warning library. The trouble here is that even now the devil's in the detail. If we choose to establish that dependency on the basis of, let's say, give me the latest version, we're developmentally coupled again. I change debug warning to support my new feature in my service B and I am forcing you to make changes before you can safely release your service A. One way to reduce this coupling is to be more specific about the versions that we pick. We treat debug warning rather like an external third party dependency. In my build script, I say my service uses version 7. In yours, you say yours uses version 6, for example. Now we are each in control of which version of debug warning we will take. We can decide when to upgrade and when not. So cool, we have our independent services. But let's be clear, we're no longer dry. We've just used our version control system to allow for two different versions of debug warning to be in use. Maybe debug warning is more like a function of a service of some kind. We could deploy it as a separate microservice perhaps. The strategy for microservices is to reduce the coupling between the services. So now we will be more, much more cautious of changes to the interface to debug warning. We will probably be prefer more loosely coupled technology to represent that interface. After all, function calls are pretty tight coupled by design, aren't they? Well, maybe. This is much more about design than it is about technology. If the function call abstracts what happens behind it, includes minimal abstract parameters, if the first thing that the function does when called is apply some kind of ports and adapters style translation to insulate the code from the call and to validate the inputs, then it is decoupled and so won't change very quickly or break quite so easily. Conversely, if this API is presented as a REST style call, but the data that it deals with is tightly coupled to the implementation and there's no translation step to validate the inputs, then it's still tightly coupled. Some technologies help us to create more loosely coupled solution than others, but the tech itself doesn't solve the problem. The design does. So there's a fundamental unavoidable link between dry and the degree to which our systems are coupled. There's a cost to sharing code as well as a benefit. So we're always treading a thin line. One side we have nasty duplication, on the other we have nasty coupling. So how do we balance these off against each other, get the best of both worlds? Inevitably this is complex and subjective. But to me, this is the real skill of software development. 
Sure, it's nice if you know your language and tools well, but that's the simple stuff compared to this. Making good choices about where you place behavior, where you draw the seams in your code between different responsibility. This is where great developers shine. The starting point for me is that there is no simple answer. Dry is too simple, as we have discussed, and some level of coupling is inevitable, assuming that you want the pieces of your system to communicate with each other at all. Dry is a good starting point as a guideline, though. I'd aim to have code in the same repo be largely dry, whatever the scale, but it's kind of fractal. Within a module, class or file, I'm not going to accept more than a couple of lines of duplication in my code. Once we get to broader concepts where one module interacts with another, then I think you need to be cautious not to generalize too soon, but also not to be too tolerant of duplication. This is hard, but finding that sweet spot is also the joy of good design. It takes skill and experience so you can be proud of yourself when you get it right. One of the many reasons why I value test-driven development quite so much is because it helps me with this kind of decision. If I write a test, I want it to be easy to write and easy to understand. If my code is too tightly coupled and the abstraction is poor, it won't be either. So if I find my test is hard to write for any reason, I know that I have a problem with the design of my code. So I can think harder and come up with better ideas now. This approach is great at highlighting overcoupled dependencies in particular. It drives me to abstract the interfaces to my dependencies better. This helps me to spot general generality earlier in the life cycle, or at least opens the door to me spotting it later. And so it helps me to keep my code dry without inventing too many crappy tactical abstractions along the way. At the next level out, services, then I think that dry gets more complex. For me, service means pretty much by definition that we treat the interface with more care. This is a division between different parts of the code that we care a lot about. The service itself should be keeping some secrets and defending its borders. The API for a service matters more than its implementation. So now we need to be careful about dry at the level of API. Because if we get it wrong, the coupling will increase and will cause more problems than the duplication. At the level of behavior represented by services, the API, then they should usually in most circumstances be dry. Services should be focused on achieving a specific job or outcome, and they should be the only place to go to get that job done. The code itself, the implementation, is more problematic. Now we have to worry again about de developmental coupling. If our services are in the same repo, we have some choices to make. We storing, building, testing and deploying things together gives us a few more options. We can alleviate coupling with shared code ownership, continuous integration, as I mentioned earlier. We can use refactoring tools to help us to make changes across the shared code. If we take the step to service independence, though, keep our services in separate repos, deploy them independently, that is microservices, then we cannot do this. At this point, I would treat dry with great suspicion and great care. Here, I would much prefer duplication to reuse. The cost of coupling now are too high. The whole point of microservices is to allow teams to make independent progress. So developmentally coupling them together to achieve reuse through dry is a big mistake that I see played out all the time. The commonest form of this mistake is for code usually called platform or common services. Code that several other services rely upon. That usually begins with the aim of trying to be architecturally dry and ends up forcing everybody to make progress in lockstep because now changes to the platform break everyone. If your team is forced to take versions of shared code for any reason other than that it does something new that you want, you're suffering from a version of this problem. Platform and common services code should take loose coupling and good abstraction more seriously than any other part of the system, but often they don't. So dry is a useful guideline and a rotten rule. 
once systems and organizations get beyond the small and simple, coupling is the real enemy. As ever, microservices are more complex than they seem on the surface. To do well at microservices, you must take coupling very seriously and use all of the tricks at your disposal to reduce and manage it. I think that includes discarding dry between microservices as a guideline. Thank you very much for watching.